<clears throat> What's going on guys? Paul Goldsmith, PJG Outdoors. Man, that storm came through here. Um, started last night and really got rough this morning. Probably about 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock. It was bad. Um, Zeta, Zeta, whatever the name of the storm is, Z-E-T-A. Um, Zeta, I think maybe Zeta. But uh, we had a bunch of trees come down. I had to go into town early this morning. I left here at 6 o'clock and it was, it was horrible. The, the driving was horrible. You couldn't see anything. The rain, it was raining so hard, the wind was blowing so hard, it was hard to drive. It was hard to see here in the upstate of South Carolina. We had a lot of big trees come down on my property and uh, nothing hit the house, thank goodness. Uh, of course, we don't have any power. And I don't know when we'll get power back. Um, looks like maybe multiple days, they said, when I talked to them. Uh, we, I, my wife and I got back here about oh 10 o'clock i guess and call but anyway bad storm i'm sure there's a lot of damage out there so keep this part of the country in, in your prayers thoughts and prayers because it uh, took we took a, a pretty good little pounding uh not like Lu louisiana and mississippi and down there they they got hammered so hard and i feel so sorry for those folks who've had such a hard time this year they've had so many storms come through but uh, our hearts go out to them. And uh, I just hope everybody uh, in our circle is safe. I've talked to all my family, all my family's safe. And uh, Joey, my son, he's, he's without power too, but hopefully we'll all get power back before long. It's just an inconvenience, that's all. It's not a big deal. But uh, we can live with it. Uh, but it was a bad storm. And I'm sure there's people out there hurting right now. So I feel for them. Wanted to do episode three of the Whitetail 101 series. Uh, not gonna be a, a real long video. Just wanted to, I'm, I'm sitting in the truck, uh, actually got the truck running, charging my phone. And, uh, or I was charging my phone, I guess the dog on the thing coming on the hook. Charging my phone and uh, cooling off a little bit. I, I've been working in the yard trying to and you know one tree fell across the driveway and i had to get it it's it's not completely down but i had to go cut a archway in it so i could get in and out without scrubbing the car so bad i actually got it where i get the truck in and out now so it's opened it up pretty good but it's laying on the power line so hopefully they'll get here and get that fixed before long anyway wanted to just be a quick video and uh one talk you know we've been talking about scent control in the last two uh, segments and we'll probably touch on sit control for a long long time because it's so important so forgive me if I keep bringing it up but it's very important in your in your deer hunting especially when you're trying to kill a mature white tail buck uh, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about scouting and <clears throat> I have I've broken down my scouting into three three categories and these are the three things that i look for when i go into the woods now under each one of these categories it breaks down into a lot of different other things but the three major things i look for when i go to scout an area first of all is the food source i want to know where that where the food source is in that area or food sources most of the time there's multiple places but i don't i want to know where all those food sources are secondly I want to know where the where the bedding areas are and third thing I want to know is I want to know the travel patterns in between the, the food source and the bedding area because if you can if you can find those three things and start setting up in the in the right places on those travel routes in between those two you'll you'll begin to see a lot more deer that's the kind of places I like to hunt is those travel travel routes between the food sources and the bedding areas. A lot of times those big bucks like to, they like to get in there and feed, but they want to get out before daylight. And, um, and they'll start cruising around 
around those ridges and stuff looking for maybe trying to pick up the scent of a hot doe and if you can if you can get on the right travel fat travel route and a lot of times you can you can pick him up when he comes through so that's the three things that i look for now in the next video that i do we're going to be talking about those food sources we're going to be talking about what those food sources are and how to find them and um, that'll that'll help you determine that food source and then the next video after that we'll be talking about those bedding areas and how to locate those and then of course after that we'll talk about those travel travel routes and how to locate those and what they kind of look like so hope you guys are having a, a great what is the day thursday yeah hope, I hope you guys are having a great thursday uh, all of you guys out there that uh, are, li are living the path of this storm i hope you did okay i hope you're safe and i hope you're uh out of harm's way i know the storms passed through skies are blue still a little bit windy it's a beautiful beautiful afternoon well and and it's and it's uh i think it's supposed to die down tonight and even get cooled and it's going to be a great weekend to hunt uh this is the time of year that i, I normally see a a big deer here on on my property this this first two weeks of november is normally the best time to catch a big deer running around out here uh trailing a doe so we're going to be working on that pretty hard this weekend see if we can't get a shot at one of those for you we'll be doing some videoing out on the power line um i got a couple of videos that i'm working on uh, I got to get those finished up and get them out. I hope to get those out this weekend, but if I don't get power back, I probably won't. Um, but anyway, hope you guys are doing good. And uh, think about that in, in the area that you're hunting now. Start thinking about where are those food sources and where are those bedding areas and how, does they, how do they relate to each other. And think about those travel patterns that you can put together already on the on the property that you already hunt and uh you know guys i just wanted to say that um uh, i'm not doing this 101 series I'm, I'm no better of a deer hunter than anybody out there I, i'm i'm not uh, i'm I, and i don't claim to be i've just hunted a long time i've hunted for 55 years I, my dad started taking me when i was seven <laughs> taking me through the woods and showing me all the different things and teaching me about the habits and the, of the white-tailed deer and how they move and how they what they eat and that sort of thing and then as I got older I picked up on a lot of it on my own and I've had a passion for it ever since and probably for the last 40 years I've been very successful in my hunting and I've killed a lot of big white-tailed mature white-tailed bucks and uh I've just been fortunate. I've been very lucky and uh, to get to hunt some of the places I've hunted, and I've been very fortunate to have the time to get out and scout that I that I needed to to have in order to to figure these deer out. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm 62 now. I've had a lot of the last couple three years. I've been hampered with my with some uh, problems, you know, and and had some surgeries and stuff, and so it slowed me down but uh, I'm getting a lot better now. I'm able to get around and go pretty good now. So hopefully I can get back uh, to, to hunting the way I've always hunted. Um, but I've had good success and I, all I'm gonna do is share with you what I've done, what I do, what works for me, what's worked for me and uh, for a long time. It's kind of a tried and true thing because it, it's, it's work, it's paid off for me. And maybe it'll help you. And if it does, that's great. If it don't, that's great. And you may disagree with a lot of things I say, and that's fine. I'm just telling you what, I'm just going to tell you what I've done and what I've learned and what I've seen and, and the things that I've figured out about white-tailed deer over the course of the years that I've been hunting. I'm not a, I don't claim to be a white-tailed expert. I just claim, and I, my claim to fame is that I've hunted for 55 years and I've learned a lot and I want to share it. I'm getting older now, so I think as, that's what we do. As we get older, we should share our knowledge that we've learned and the things that we've picked up on we, we need to share them so other people can enjoy and and you know it's exciting to see the young people out there uh, getting into hunting and and learning about hunting and what hunting is really all about what hunting really means you know hunting's more than just killing an animal it's way more than that 
and, and, and there's a lot of young people out there that are picking up on that and they're learning that and, and doing really good and, and I'm proud of every one of them. Um, you know, the, it's our responsibility as hunters to also be conservationists and also to, to give back to the wildlife. And, you know, if, if we own land or if we lease land, you know, making those food plots and putting those minerals out there and all that, that stuff that we can do that helps those deer to be, to have a, to be healthier, stronger, and have a better herd. You know, when I first started hunting uh, 55 years ago with my dad, there wasn't near as many whitetail deer in South Carolina as there are today. Not near as many. I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, you know, you had a great hunt if you saw one deer back then. It, it only had one doe day and all this stuff. I mean, you could only kill like, I don't know, three or four whitetail bucks or something and, and you could kill one or two, maybe two does on a doe, on the doe day. But you know, there just wasn't that many deer. And it, here in the upstate, it was rare to see a deer. Well, now through the works of the South Carolina DNR, with the help of the hunters and and all the, the conservation people that have joined together, we, we have an extremely strong deer population right now. And we there's a lot of it's there's a lot more deer than there used to be. And I, I and I love it. You know, we saw an extreme rise in the eighties and and then, you know, it seems like it's kinda of leveled off now. But there's a lot of deer there's a lot of deer in the upstate now. Whereas before, there, there just wasn't that many. And I'm talking about back in the 1970s. Um, 